when the $10 YouTube poop outsells Call of Duty by the Russian Badger. Lethal Company is like an Easter egg hunt on a minefield. I heard a squelching <laughs> If that minefield was also located on a shooting range, Oh god, oh <laughs> inside of a haunted house crawling with monsters <laughs> the <deepest laughs> With the scariest monster of all being the crushing demands of capitalism yeah. 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 Minimum yeah. wage is like in the United States oh, god. <laughs> As a $10 game made by a furry in his basement, I am morally obligated to play it so my kneecaps remain unshattered and my mailbox unpipe bombed. Of course Heidi drops that. He's like, he's a furry too, Lamar. I know I'm late to the party. I know you've already seen tons of videos and tons of streams, but I can assure you, this one is most definitely worse. Hey, Bada, does this sound like an air horn to you? And if you don't mind, I'm just gonna yap about it for 40 minutes because I'm dying to tell you why I'm in love with this YouTube poop of a game that outsold Call of Duty. I really do love going to work. <laughs> <laughs> to warn you in advance, this video is sponsored by Swouse, my brand new merch collection on sale for nice. a long time, but I'm not gonna tell you about it for like eight more minutes because I don't wanna interrupt the story. So let's get started. Okay, so there's this company called The Company that puts a metaphorical gun to your head and gives you two choices. Make money for the company. I don't speak German neither. I'm here for money. <laughs> Money. <laughs> or, if that doesn't sound like your style, your second option is summary execution by the company. Truth is, <laughs> the game, was rigged, the game was rigged from the start. <laughs> The money required to avoid your execution is called quota, and it doesn't matter how silly or how scary things get, it is the only thing that matters. Hey, what's up, man? You know you're gonna be summarily executed into the void of space if you don't get a quota, right? This may seem like just another boring five-letter word, Q-U-O-T-A, who cares? But the more you play this game, the more you realize it is so much more than that. You will experience horrors beyond your comprehension in the name of quota. Yo, why he herbal? <laughs> <laughs> you will betray your best friends in the name of quote. Shut, what? shut what? up, America! Get that subs. Shut up, fuck. Big boy. <laughs> oh okay. my God. Fuck you! Fuck you! It's getting you! It's getting you! It's getting you, dog. Sorry. Start the ship. Start the fucking ship. Put the keys in the ignition, please. Hear me loud and clear, and I mean loud and clear when I say it's quota or die. Yes, yeah, in the Ziploc, call that yeah. shit loud and clear. <laughs> quota is achieved by stealing. Repurposing oh. random junk from quote abandoned industrialized moons that I can assure you were abandoned for a reason. Uh oh. <laughs> so what I'm hearing is it is a game based about strategically and tactically acquiring things and transferring them to an alternative location. <laughs> this game gets better. Yo! Oh my God. This Whoa. crap, officially called scrap, is fantastic because it makes absolutely no sense. What makes no sense is this nuclear powered reactor I'm holding is worth less than a rubber ducky. A jar nice. of pickles can be worth more than an engine. A lamp can be worth more than a nuclear reactor. Even the bodies of your dead teammates technically have a value. And in case you weren't already depressed, each and every one of you is worth five whole credits. Why does this game's economy let you trade five human beings for a jar of pickles? Right. you a gift. What's up? A jar of poop? Pickles? <laughs> Those are <laughs> Value is nice. important, but weight is even more important because the heavier something is, and the more it drains your stamina and hurts your regen. Which, in a game about sprinting away from things that want you dead, is important to keep an eye on. You can close doors on them, right? They can't open doors. Oh, they can't open doors! Oh my God. <laughs> Dipshit, <laughs> dumbass spider can't even open a goofy odd doors. <laughs> opens door. Oh God, the spider has opposable thumbs. <laughs> The five basic movements. I do think that so far, because I actually haven't played Lethal Company, it's one of those things that a lot of VTubers ended up playing it. I personally have never been able to play it just because, you know, <laughs> I'm kind of an oddity in the VTuber community, if that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> Just kind of in my own random dingus corner of the internet. But uh, it, it shows how effective a simplistic gameplay loop is. You don't need a gameplay loop with 20 different systems and seven different trackers on you at all times, right? Yes, absolutely. There's certain games. Some games that I play, like Final Fantasy uh, 14, right? Where, cool, you have your... <laughs> your tomb debuff you got your dropsy debuff you got all these debuffs you got all your other buffs you have to go through not every game needs that it, it just comes down to you need to strategically and tactically acquire things and transfer them to an alternative location wink wink and but you, the more you carry the more you're burdened down the more you're burdened down the easier it is for for the spookies to catch up with you like how simplistic that is compared to modern AAA and quadruple A games and how effective it is 
is absolutely wild to me. You'll make while scrapping, I like to call Spidey or Dipsy. Dancing, interacting, pointing. Loaf. I saw a monster out there. Scanning, which is super important for spotting loot and bad guys, so spam that shit. And why? Yapping. I think it goes without saying that yapping is mandatory if you hope to survive. Aren't preachers like professional yappers? <laughs> I mean, they yeah, 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 <laughs> this is a little horrifying, but it's kind of soothing at the same time. Other yeah, crap is two-handed, which means you can't access your inventory, climb ladders, or pick up anything else with a perfect example being... Oh, yes! Yo, scream it as loud as you can. I want to hear it as loud as you can. <laughs> Yo, you actually had... Soda! <laughs> There's all kinds of quirkiness when it comes to scrap, and the apparatus is a prime example. This mini nuclear reactor is what powers the entire facility you're looting, so once you take it, all the electricity is gone, which means no more lights and an immediate spike in radiation levels. I love grabbing That's super cool, actually, because, like, oh, how do I word that? I was thinking along the lines of payday too, when you do certain objectives and it's like, hey, now you need to extract, or uh, even other games, it's where you. Even Hell Divers, right? Hell Divers too, right? Once you finish that last objective and you can extract, as far as I'm aware, for each major objective that you do, the spawn rate increases or things increase. So naturally, if you blitz all the main objectives and you're trying to do side objectives, then you're gonna get molly whopped. I mean, like we're like God, three bile titans, two chargers, eight spitters. So so many hunters. Oh, so many hunters. There's so. I don't want the hunters anymore. Chat. There's so many. The entire screen was covered. It's so bad. <laughs> But like things like that, right? You are grats. We are engaging the end game. Let us go to evac. Let us go to extract. I like that. Like the in the game, you have a built in mechanic that sets the pace. I actually am a huge fan of it because a lot of games, right? They either drag out because you're not getting feedback. Your team's not giving you feedback. The enemy team's not giving you feedback. This gives you that feedback. Hey, did you take the core of the power shut down? Yeah, crap. Guess we got to go, right? And everyone can get on the same page with that. It's easy to understand. And I like the ease of which this game is able to really just communicate what it's about. More games need to be like this. Sometimes keep it simple, stupid, right? Kiss, right? <laughs> thing because it makes everybody's day worse. Yeah, pretty big fan. I grab this thing and I ruin everybody's day. Me grabbing my car keys after 12 <laughs> course lights. <laughs> oh, 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 no. Oh, oh, <laughs> I wish this beer would stop telling me to drive. Which one of you fucks pulled the battery? Dude, I was by myself. I was by myself picking shit up, and I was like, you know what? At least I can see where I'm going and nope. make my way back. And nope. then all the fucking lights turned off. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. Anyway, you can crazy, call me an bro. idiot for using it as the world's largest, heaviest, most expensive flashlight, but my goals are beyond your understanding. Hey, hold up. Hey, I got a big flashlight for the crew. Get out of the way. <laughs> big flashlight coming through. Big flashlight boy on the move. Big expensive flashlight. Plenty of scrap has use beyond simply turning into credits to meet quota, like keys that unlock doors. I got a key for moments like this. Nice. Hi. Oh, did absolutely <laughs> nothing. Never mind. But my personal favorite, stop signs, so I can beat the shit out of bugs using stolen government infrastructure. I wish an anomaly would right now. No matter the junk you collect, it is completely worthless unless you cash it out for credits to meet quota, which is where the terminal comes in. Terminal is the second most important word in this game next to quota, because if you don't learn it, you're in trouble. Your ship's landing and takeoff is controlled by a lever on the dash, but selecting where you want to go is the terminal's business. Mm -hmm. Typing moons will tell you which are available to loot and how the weather is and trust me weather in this game can be a real kick in the dick once you've made up your mind you're typing route then where you want to go like the company building so you can cash out your scrap much like all things in lethal company the hq is also trying to kill you turning in your scrap to the window and ringing a bell will turn meaningless crap into cold hard credits but don't stand too close once the slot opens or you will also be collected Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> I flew too close to the the tentacle monster, it's time for payday. Ah! Oh, yeah. I, I mean, paycheck. <laughs> the size of this paycheck not only depends on what scrap you delivered, but when you delivered it. On day zero, when quota is due, they'll pay you 100% full price for your items, but any day earlier than that, and you only get a fraction of their value, sometimes 30 cents on the dollar. This huh. is a bunch of math I don't care about. Sell whatever you want on any day you want, as long as you meet that almighty number called quota. Assuming you did that, 
Holy shit, we can finally start having fun. Now that you're no longer a little piss baby and you understand quota, let's get down to serious business. <laughs> <laughs> With newfound credits come newfound options, a big one being moons. Some moons are distant, like the infamous Titan, that costs money if you want to land on. They are both high risk and high reward, because mm. even though they cost credits, these moons have the best crap and the scariest monsters defending that crap. Hey, what's up, oh, bitch? God. Oh, God. Freddy Fazbear. What's up, Freddy bitch? Fazbear. Freddy Fazbear. Back up! Back up, bro. You're moving the trash! I saw, I saw four me. people lined up. <laughs> oh, my God! Come on. How much money did you pay to travel to this planet? The other major option for burning credits? Items. And I know you're gonna ask me, so let me tell you in advance that you cannot buy beans. Hey, you want some beans? Uh, no. Beans? Beans. What kind of beans? This must got beans. <laughs> beans, along with fish, one of the recurring memes on this channel. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> what the Where's my new dog show? I mean, you can download a mod if you really need beans. I think you've noticed by now. People love modding this shit. No, yeah. I think I downloaded the whole video company. <laughs> and who needs beans when you got swags? My brand new limited time merch that took me two years to get right. And I'll tell you why. You see, I'm one of those perpetually cold MFs that's always shivering his ass off, and that makes Carhartt hoodies my very best friend. But the problem with wearing Carhartt is that it makes me feel like a fraud. Yeah, yeah. So Yes, <laughs> if you're wearing a Carhartt hoodie and it's clean, you are not a motherfucker that should be wearing a Carhartt hoodie. I think this shit for a living. I'm not forklift certified, and I've never stepped foot on a construction site, so I've got no business wearing the uniform of a guy that works 37 hours a day. 35 hours a motherfucking day. So to break free of this Carhartt prison, I tried every hoodie you can imagine, from streetwear to activewear, over the past two years, and I found the final form of hoodie. I didn't like cotton hoodies because they stretch out, lose yeah. shape, and gather those beads of lint. <laughs> Makes I didn't sense. like polyester hoodies because sitting in synthetic fabric workout gear all day made me feel like a piece of shit. <laughs> My Swaps <laughs> hoodie is the perfect blend of primarily cotton with a touch of polyester so it's comfortable, never bees lint, never loses shape, and always looks fit check fresh as the day you bought it. Fresh. The design is inspired by my favorite part of every day, which is the time I spend doing dumb shit with my mocap suit and the source engine. Tossing shit, breaking shit, hitting myself in the head with a brick. Yeah. All the things that make you want to say <laughs> swouse. My cousin Tyler did such a great job with the designs that we decided to make t-shirts and mouse pads too. I mouse mean, swouse pads. I am so- I, I would, as somebody that loves these mouse pads and game mats, I, I mean, I play, I've been playing TCGs for years. Old Legend of the Five Rings, Naruto CCG, Yu-Gi-Oh getting into synchro formats. So I've played games for many, many years. And I called that mouse pads were super meta for PCs. No, no, it's never going to happen. I go to I go to sporting goods stores and I see like AR-15 mouse pads. I definitely may or may not have a Cinder mouse pad, uh, Zentrea mouse pad, right? Oh my god, it, this is this is so tech. I love this. I might actually go for this. I'm committed to the quality of this merch that the first thousand of you to order the entire three item set at the link below will receive a handwritten thank nice. you note from my own goddamn fingers. I'm gonna break my hands doing this. You've got two weeks from today to place an order with items arriving at your door in about three to four months. I know that's a little bit of a wait, but it makes sure that every Everybody who wants a hoodie can get a hoodie. Right. Unlike those limited merch drops that sell out immediately and only a handful of people get the item. That's so fucking stupid. I stand yeah. by the quality of my products. You can cancel or refund at any time. I will give you your money back. And I am begging you to place an order at the link below because this shit is too good to miss out on. Use code BADGER for 10% off and thank you for hearing me out. I want to state for a second, this is actually why I respect Badger a lot. Because he stands by his product, right? If he's got a sponsor, if he has a product that he's pushing, if he has something that he's doing and trying to sell, right? He is he's invested in the project. There are so many creators across YouTube, TikTok, Twitch that will, oh, well, I'll just get a sponsor. I'll get a sponsor and sponsor or I'll, I'll, I'll push this product, right? And doing what I do with React content, right? I mean, I have email after email every day of like, hey, Kip, would you like to promote our project? Or we are with this company. Would you like to? And I, I'm not for that. The fact that he's invested in it, the fact that he puts his entire self and brand behind it, this speaks to the integrity. I mean, sure, I could just be that one person that just, oh, well, we're going to watch Badger do the ha ha funnies. Right. But it's so much more than that. Right. Like I'm I'm small time. I also am in a little bit of a different sphere. Would I ever have a chance to meet Badger? Probably not. But what I can say is from my own corner of the Internet, thank you so much for doing what you do. 
and just being that inspiration for a lot of content creators, being that person, being that difference, because it does matter in the endless vastness that is YouTube, the vastness that is Twitch. Russian Badger is a name that I personally look at and go, this is going to be quality. And some people are going to be like, quality Lamau. It is quality. Quality memes, quality product. It, he's got integrity. He has a great product. He, he researches and puts himself into what he does and what he promotes. That is being the difference. Not being a shill for the latest crypto coin. Not uh, selling a, uh, a you know a product that doesn't work. Not signing up with the first person that you know says, "Hey, would you like to do this?" Right? I'm sure tomorrow I get a sponsor. I personally would feel a little disingenuous if I had a sponsor on a React video, as to me that just feels disingenuous. But. I just wanted to take a second to point out that not everybody does this, what Badger does. Not everybody will take the time for the first thousand orders to write a handwritten card. That is why I will follow Badger. That is why I will continually react to Badger. And even then, if Badger one day says, hey, you know, I don't want reactions done to this content. I do my best to give about four days. I completely understand and 100% respect this man. Wanted to give you kind of some background on my thoughts on Badger as an individual, as a creator. Absolutely next level inspirational. Moving on from swouse to more serious items, we got to talk about flashlights. Because in Lethal Company, you live and die by the flashlight. Who put a flashlight in the cabinet with 1% battery? I'm going to crack your fucking skull open. If you don't have a flashlight to spot mines, turrets, and monsters lurking in the dark, ready to nay nay your ass into an early grave, you are destined for a life of pain. There's a mine in here somewhere. Oh, oh no. Also <laughs> <laughs> you died because no flashlight, no bread alert. <laughs> These things are so critical that if you fall to your death, your teammates will have one thing to say. Damn. I really miss that flashlight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a dipshit version and a pro version that is brighter, larger, and has double the battery, and if you forget to recharge it, I'm feeding your ass to a spider. <laughs> All items, including flashlights, are bought via the terminal and delivered to you with a jingle that is nearly impossible to miss. Apart from flashlights, everybody's got a tier list of what's good and what's bad, and the walkie-talkie is definitely divisive. It allows you to communicate with anybody else anywhere on the map that is also holding a walkie-talkie, but my friends are so loud that I just can't use it. <laughs> <laughs> well, all of you shut the fuck up. Items can range. I don't know. I'm so mixed on that because, like, I came from Xbox Live, right? And I think people see me as, oh, Kip, well, you're so proper. You're so professional. I've heard some stuff on Xbox Live. All I'm going to say, like, one, one random just throwing the worst insults and slurs at another random in mid Modern Warfare 2 lobby. That was an experience, right? And then you had little Timmy <laughs> starts cracking up. He, start, he starts engaging in that too. His mom comes in the room. <laughs> and it's just like, Timmy, you don't say that word. Go and apologize. <laughs> Like, this reminds me of that, though. It reminds me of the the super compressed audio, the super compressed mic quality. It reminds me of just that experience. And I think that's why games like this and games like uh, Helldivers 2 as well, I think that's why they're doing so well, because they are a social experience. You have to remember, and there, there are people today that probably don't remember, which is kind of a scary thought to think about, back in Call of Duty World at War, back in Call of Duty 4, back in Modern Warfare 2, back in Halo 3, back in Halo Reach, right? You got to sit in lobbies and and talk with people. It's, it's wild, but you don't see that anymore. So it doesn't surprise me when you have games like Final Fantasy XIV, which do, does have that social aspect, right? You have a number of people running in-game nightclubs almost nightly right you have games like amogus where you can have have the funny i'm sussing you out or you can be kip be imposter seven games in a row and that's why your mod doesn't trust you anymore <laughs> i gaslit him so hard oh my god <laughs> it wasn't even it, i honestly felt bad afterwards he saw me i vented <laughs> Vented to him, saw me, reported me, gaslit the entire lobby into thinking he was lying, ejected. He has never played Among Us with me since. <laughs> but that's why games like Among Us, games like uh, funny game that we're watching, right? Lethal Company, games like 
hill divers it is that social aspect that social experience that so many of us are and so many games are missing nowadays and honestly i wonder if part of that is esrb i wonder if part of that is pressures from investors a number of things it could be right well, it doesn't look good on us if we have people waiting in a lobby and somebody is talking about how I uh, can't even say that on YouTube. I'm going to make a chicken joke. I'm not making it. Nope. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying, right? It doesn't look good. But didn't we also have online interactions not rated by ESRB? Wasn't that the legal catch all for that? I, it's, it's It blows my mind. And sure, you have things like Discord. Sure, you have things. There's a couple other things out there. Uh, one's really popular. I can't remember what it's called. But you have things like that, that kind of bridge. It's just not the same. And I think that this is recovering elements of gaming that a lot of us are missing. So that's kind of my two cents on that. <laughs> useless novelties that provide zero utility. Hey, can you buy that candlelit dinner, please? Who the fuck bought a toilet? <laughs> Two items with situational utility, like performance-enhancing medicine to avoid losing all my ad revenue on this video, yeah. even though it's apparently a safe and legal combo of amphetamines and helium. Oh, I gotta hit it? <laughs> he hit it! <laughs> I'm putting flashbangs in this same... Okay, that was actually really good, though. That was almost one for one. That was actually really cool. It's the dude falling down the, uh, the stairs on the trailer meme, right? If you look at it, it, it's got the same skeleton. That was actually a really good recreation. That was really good. I loved that. That was so cool. I'm putting flashbangs in the same situational slash possibly useless category. Even though it's funny to flashbang something with eight eyes because it theoretically hits them four times as hard, my homies <laughs> never deploy it correctly on any monster, spiders included. He's got a flashbang. To your right, to your right. There's a mine as well. <laughs> Mop. Mop. Hey, look, I see. Maybe it worked. Uh, I think it died. You Spooter. killed it, dog. It's dead. Nice. I'm walking past this one. No, The only item more likely to betray your teammates than a flashbang is a ladder. Because no Before we get into the ladder portion, it's no different than a game like Phasmophobia, right? Where you can have things that are like, oh, well, this is just better. Uh, for example, some of the cursed objects, right? Well, uh, Ouija board, let's just find where it's, you know, find out where it is really quick. Then you're, but your teammate doesn't remember that you have to actually close the session. And then the Ouija board breaks and then the D hunts them down across the across the kitchen god it's so funny like or, or, or hell divers right where turrets are notorious for just absolutely tking people the mot was it mines on launch too oh my god like just because it's good as it turns out when you play with certain people certain friends of that entire metagame chart gets turned up on its head and it's the most fascinating thing to watch unfold no matter how sturdy it is it is only as safe as the guy that's holding it just fucking drop, drop it all <laughs> He's gonna die. <laughs> Just You're not so funny now, are you? You want something truly useful? Buy a teleporter, which lets you yoink any player you are currently spectating back to the ship, dead or alive. Oh no. This is very important to do that because the company deducts a big chunk of credits for every crewmate you leave behind but as long as you collect the corpse you avoid the tax okay i still so don't cool. uh, okay Whoa. who's getting excited stop 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 Whoa. there's even an inverse teleporter which beams you from the ship into a random part of the facility as scary as that sounds press the yellow button okay <laughs> oh no all right let's get in there all right we gotta go <laughs> 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 That is horrifying that That's all amazing. of them are now gone. The only major downside here is that items do not travel with you, so it's Ooh. best to use it for body retrieval or getting a trapped buddy out of a jam. Hey, teleport me out. I'll go back to the ship. I need to be teleported. Okay, don't move. I'm not teleporting his dumb ass. <laughs> Wasting resources. I'm looting other sections of the map. Ooh, engine. <laughs> no way. I gotta see what happens. Yo, Loaf, are you good? <laughs> loaf. Loaf, can you hear me? Is there a loaf still alive in here? Nope. Mm -mm. <laughs> that answers my question. I think I'm done here. With that, it's time to move on from items to cooperation. Because if you understand teamwork, it'll open a lot of doors for you. This, this door? 
So I do want to point out really quick, I love these transitions in this video. Badger has a way with writing scripts and doing videos that is incredibly immersive. If so, if someone else were to make this, right? Because it is following a fairly uh, a fairly linear structure, right? Where we get in with the the introduction par uh, intro intro sen uh, excuse, introduction sentence, so to speak, followed by the introduction paragraph. Oh, hey, eight minutes in, we'll be doing our uh, my, my swouse thing, right? It gets you interested for later. Then we go into story, the basic premise, supporting paragraph one. Supporting paragraph two is going to be uh, your item support. Supporting paragraph three is going to be what we're getting into right now, cooperation, right? I love how he's doing this, but, and for someone like me, I can see, okay, I can see how you're writing this. I also noted it in, uh, in his, uh, in his uh, legally distinct lobster <laughs> video, right? <laughs> Like, I can look at that and I can see that that's not to lessen the presentation by any means. I can see how he's doing it. I can see kind of the thought process going into this. It's very neatly organized, but unless you're going at it from an analytical reactionary angle, you don't really notice it. I think that it's super cool. And the fact that he has the skill, the comedic wit, the timing and the experience to tie all of this together in such a linear fashion, in such a digestible, fast paced uh, format right i think that that's super indicative of his skill level like badger is next level with this yeah open it no the other one that says lock dipshit <laughs> <laughs> it goes without saying that being friendly and cooperative leads to better outcomes in lethal company but if you ask me being hostile and chaotic is a whole lot funnier oh you know what i think he's a piece of shit but we won't bring that up <laughs> but if you hope to be quota especially the larger quotas you'll need to trust and cooperate with your teammates gary put it there he said it won't go off i don't think it's gonna go off it's gonna go so off well yeah i don't think so oh <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said this was tech! I thought you said it was tech! Making tough choices is a fundamental part of what makes Lethal Company so addicting, and I'll illustrate this with a door. Let's say you've got a teammate being chased by a monster rushing towards the ship, and you've got two choices. Close the door and let your teammate die, but keep yourself and all your other teammates safe from the monster. Close it on, Digi. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> or alternatively, open the door for your sprinting teammate to potentially save his life, but run the risk of the monster getting inside and yeah. killing all of you. Open up, open up, it's open so up, good. open up, open okay, up, coming, I'm coming. Open up, open okay, up. okay, okay, okay. No, why did you bring the bees in? Fuck me. This is a major reason why Lethal Company is incredible, because weighing risks and constantly making life or death decisions for both you and your teammates is always exciting. Oh, right? here they come. Here they come, Grab here it. they come, here they we come. Close the door. Better hurry up, better hurry up. Oh, he left him behind. He left <laughs> Gary behind. Oh, no. <laughs> I think it's beneficial to have some pessimists on the team that may be a little negative, but also keep your feet on the ground with pragmatic decision making, especially mm -hmm. with credit spending. Did you, did you spend 500 fucking dollars? <laughs> <laughs> but you can't forget to balance out these negative players with hopeful optimists that bring enough energy and levity to keep the whole team going. I'm ready to work for minimum wage. <laughs> the teamwork. I think that this is so important though, because this came up with Hell Divers. I'm cocking around a lot. I honestly rather enjoyed the game where you have these players that and i've talked about it too the concept of metas right where people are like oh well if you're not bringing uh og drop shield rail gun you know you, you're you're getting kicked if you bring in watchdog or turrets you're getting kicked right like th that's a certain mentality if there's a certain type of player there's a certain type of group that will like that i'm not as somebody that you know discusses meta games as someone discusses that there's easier more efficient ways to do the game right like i understand that and sometimes, you know, maybe that's required, like having a buddy tell you like, you know, Kip, why are you using this weapon? Oh, I like it. Kip, it is literally the worst time to kill in the game. Like uh, if I was going to use the rivet gun in Dead Space 2, right? Why are you using the rivet gun? I thought it was cool. I'm going to call me pretty good on it, right? Kip, it's literally god awful, right? Sometimes you need that reality check. But I mean, if you're doing, say, oh, I don't know, a, a Dead Space 2 zealot run on Twitch and you're just like, I'm using plasma cutter only, right? And someone's just like, oh, well, seeker rifle is better or uh, oh, javelin gun's better, right? I mean, yeah, you're entitled to your opinion. One of these may or may, or may not be a more efficient way of doing things, but who cares? That's the key. Who cares? 
You can have your meta sweat lobby. You can have your casual lobby. You can have your I'm going to joke around and I'm going to smack things with a stop sign lobby, right? These each cater to a different kind of player. And that's important about Lethal Company is you can have all of these players in separate lobbies or even in the same lobby and they can mesh together through decision making processes. It's not really dissimilar to getting people together for, say, I don't know, Pathfinder or D&D or even GURP session, right? Where it's like, yeah, you have the one person that min max their character sheet, their class, race, attributes, right feats they, they min maxed all that to high <laughs> hell but you have another dude that's like yeah i'm a i'm a dwarf sorcerer and i'm just here for capitalism i'm, I'm here to just tax people out of their homes right and you just look at but why though <laughs> like i want to play it the fact that lethal company can mesh all of these players in one is why it's a good game in my opinion it's why it goes over a game like modern warfare 3 which did not that did that not get in a little bit of controversy for some big names i guess in streaming saying that oh people stacking is toxic to the game or people stacking is ruining the game i'm sorry i didn't know playing in a full queue with your friends was really bad for games like <laughs> it's such a weird thing to hear when i hear when that's like the most relevant thing i hear about modern warfare 3 and everything else I hear, like we're watching right now, the Lethal Company video by Badger is an absolute banger. I've heard nothing bad about this game. I'm sure they exist. I'm sure that there's definitely critique design points that yeah, absolutely are going to be a little, of you know, people aren't going to like them. I understand that and I acknowledge that. But you see why this is going to outsell an Activision Blizzard title that has what trillions behind it. It might be billions. Let's let's go billions with a B, right? An investment behind it. I want to know, I, I would love to be a fly on the wall and hear the investor calls that happened after Lethal Company outsold it. I would love to hear those conversations because that <laughs> that's going to be juicy. Dynamic radically changes if you have the big lobby mod enabled, which is extremely popular and changes the team from a max of four players to 40 players. Oh my and the God. more players you have, the less teamwork is important. If you have yeah. a lobby exceeding 10 players, it's going to feel like you picked up an entire Menards worth of contractors on the way to that moon. Smoking on the Menards 2x4. <laughs> <two by> <laughs> oh, Menards 2x4 is not even 2x4s anymore. They're 1.5 by 3.5s. <laughs> 85 hours a motherfucking day. I do this shit for a living. We got some Yes, I'll do it in 85 hours, a motherfucker. Brother, you got that car hard on you. I heard the name of the kid, my gas mask. How about you slap my ass and call me as soon as it attack my gun, brother? Now that I'm thinking about it, but we did see this with Destiny 2, too. There was a chime point in Destiny 2. I think it was about. Was it Season of Arrivals about? There was a glitch where you could merge two raid lobbies. And I remember distinctly going into Last Wish with a merged rage lobby of 12 characters, right? Or 12 players, right? Going and doing Riven of a Thousand Voices with a 12 stack of Outbreak Perfected was absolute insanity. The issue with Outbreak was because the little the little um, Siva node, hit, if it hits one of the eyes and it's very prone to hit the eyes, it wipes, right? But man... Ribbon of a Thousand Voices in a 12 stack was great. Like, you don't need to be like, well, you know, this we're going to go back to Season of Arrival. You, you don't need your well lock. You don't need your Titan with a bubble because back then they, they did stack, right? Because normally you would need, you know, those two when you're doing damage. Um, You know, you would go up near the hand. You would drop your well, drop bubble back, get your weapons of light, go forward because they did stack. And, you know, you would go ham, right? But with a 12 stack, you could go in with a 12 stack of, like, Rat King, who cares? And I think a lot more games need to understand that. I think if Bungie right now brought back 12 player raids, like maybe if they gave like an increase, like a decrease reward, I think that they'd be super fun. I think they'd be fine. I think that'd be a really cool feature just for like casual, like, yeah, let's just go in and blitz, you know, last wish or something. I think that it introduces the fun factor because there's going to be people out there that are just going to be like, you know, uh, I, I don't really like the 40 player lobbies because we can't do teamwork effectively. You're not going to get the teamwork off. It's not going to happen. You get 40 people in, a, get 40 people in a room and ask them to agree on what caliber is going to be best. Right. Ask them at 25 yards. What caliber is going to be best? You're going to have that one smart, a smart aleck it's gonna say 50 bmg you know one guy that's like well i do like my 762 tokarev well i think nine millimeters just fine nah 45 acp i want that target down right bro my, my brother in christ it's tw it's 25 yards out why are we not using 22 well you know what? i prefer 10 millimeter 40 smith and wesson let's go right 40 people in the same room will never agree on anything <laughs>
You kind of just run with it, though. Mechanics be damned at that point. Just run the game. <laughs> Everything changes when you go beyond the default four players. A horror game isn't much of a horror game when you outnumber the monsters and all you can hear is chatter about George W. Bush. Yeah. I <laughs> Yo, what were you Hello? saying about George Bush earlier before you cut off? I was talking about my morning ritual. Uh, every morning, I wake up, I salute the flag, I, I take a shit, yesterday. get out of bed, and then I, I kiss a photo of, of George Bush every morning. Herschel Walker and W. It's about time nice. we got to the monsters anyway, because each one being unique adds yet another layer of complexity and, quite frankly, fun, if you ask me. Oh! I do like that he saved this for later, actually. As somebody that is analyzing the script, actually, it makes sense to go over not only the story first, but, well, what are you going to be dealing with most? Oh, now we're going to deal with the monsters now that we're halfway through this script, quote, quote unquote, right? It makes sense to save this from an analysis standpoint because he's already laid the ground. What is the story about? What are we? Why are we here? What are we doing here? He's already already fleshed that out for us. Okay, cool. You got your quota you got to meet. Got that? Yeah, beat your quota. Meet, don't meet your quota, you lose. Meet your quota. Just do it, right? <laughs> Going into items. These are how you interact with your world. This is the basics you need to know. Oh, now that we're caught up with teamwork using items and stuff, we should probably talk about those things, the spooky horrors beyond comprehension that mankind, you're going to be fighting in the game, right? I like the progression of this. It's a logical progression. If you put this monster section first and you put items here, do you think it would make as much sense? And I, I open that up to people in the comment section. I think that this was done very well. <laughs> wait, somebody's on the oh, wait a minute. When you land on a moon, the day starts at 8.02 a.m. And it's imperative that you move as fast as possible. Go, 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 7.25 an hour, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> If you ain't first, you're last. Get up that ladder, boy. <laughs> because the ship will automatically leave you behind at midnight, and as the day goes on, more and more monsters will spawn. Yo, what the? <laughs> you might think you're built different after easy looting in the early game, but once the sun goes down, your likelihood of getting uh -huh. g-checked by a monster goes way up. Damn, Damn I'm get the good. Freak out of there. I'm built different, man. I'm built different. That's right. I made it. I'm built distinctly, bro. Damn. Oh. That's crazy. The first monster to keep in mind, gravity. I'm willing to bet that gravity kills more interns than any other monster, and the number of times I get accused of pushing people is ridiculous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, <saw that. laughs> I didn't what? push him. I mean, I guided him, but I didn't push him. <laughs> Uh, saucy, Sus. Be real. Okay, okay, fine, fuckface. Spell suspicious. <laughs> you cannot spell suspicious. All right. S. You go first. E. No. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and a education, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Turrets are self-explanatory, but mines have a little quirk. By this point, you've already seen so many deaths to landmines that they just aren't funny anymore. Mamma mia! <laughs> but what's interesting about them is that they don't detonate until you step off of them. You have to be on it. Interesting. <laughs> so if you ever accidentally trigger one, you can save lives by getting your teammates out of the blast radius before you step off. Some monsters you can negotiate with, like hoarding bugs, that will completely leave you alone if you drop them loot. Hey, come here, fuckface. There you go. No, no, no. There, there. Get out of here. I had no idea what this thing is. Does this actually do the yippee thing? I've heard the sound effect everywhere. And I absolutely adore it. This thing is precious. <laughs> you see, he's excited. That was a good trade. It's so it truly good. does not matter what that loot is. Bada literally gave one a gun, and it immediately left him alone. I'm out of bullets. I'm out of bullets. Oh, let him take a I'm shotgun. Negotiate. Negotiate. Okay, get out. 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 But no, no thing in that every monster can be negotiated with. Because if you try to pull that shit with Bracken, he may not be so amused. I'm gonna give him some Coca-Cola and we'll negotiate. <laughs> Oh Bracken is the most beloved entity in the game that prefers red to blue and is often modded to become Freddy Fazbear. All right, yeah, if I can you call it. him Freddy Rizbear again, I'm no. gonna ban you, Jamesy. <laughs> like that's, a, that's a straight up timeout. <laughs> timeout, 600 seconds. Second offense, 6,000. <laughs> God, he's right there. Hey, what's up, my boy? Oh. 
Oh, oh, my God. God. <laughs> Bro, I summoned him. That was me. Wait, is he that Nene? He'll snap he your neck do. and drag your body back to his trap house if you get too close or stare too long, but if you only glance at him, he'll just leave. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I see that I'm not alone anymore. Did Bracken come back? Okay, 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 he came back. He shared short. <laughs> Senor Bracken. Kind of reminds me of uh, Ryuk from Death Note, actually. A little bit. Oh my god! Some monster interactions are just horse shit. Like the speed that a thumper can wave dash is nothing short of a death sentence. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> what is that speed? He's I feel zooming. like Gary would be so hyped about his movement. And don't even get me started on the spooky little girl. The math required to understand her behavior could probably stump Richard Fine. Oh, girl, what this? I, I... All right, so should I be scared or not? She's just breathing. What? <laughs> she ran away because she's a scared little coward. <laughs> See you later, chicken shit. Dumb mad child. For nice. the most part, each monster has flaws for you to exploit. If you don't want to get eaten by a giant, make sure he doesn't see you. There's another one! Oh, God! If you don't want to get eaten by a dog, make sure he doesn't hear you. Chad, I'm going to say it super quietly. What the dog doing? What is oh, the dog doing? Oh, look at me. I proc on sound. <laughs> Stupid ass dog. <laughs> the more unique the monster's flaw, the more unique the interaction. And I think Coilhead takes the cake for me. I don't know what these guys do. No, I could not get out. Coilheads are invincible, but can only move when you aren't looking at them. So making sure. Oh, well, so they're the Weeping Angels from Doctor Who, right? Oh, okay, this makes sense. One of your teammates is always making eye contact is crucial. Hold E and look quick. Ooh. <laughs> Cooperation, to bring that up again, is the best way to deal with them. But if you have a teammate nearby and you just don't tell them, that's also a solution. Hmm. Cooperation is mandatory for this section. Man, it's almost like he went over cooperation in the prior segment. Take notes, people writing YouTube script. Take note, people analyzing this video. Wink, wink. Uh, it's towards... Well, can you close doors on him? Oh, what, the blob? No, they open doors. All things can open doors. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> he sacked Do him. not go in there. Do not. Do not the door. Do not. Do not the door. Go in there. He's Do gonna go not in. go in there. He's going to go in. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I'm going to go back to the ship. All right. So what happened? You all right. So, um, you want to talk about that? <laughs> <laughs> I do not. Counterintuitively, he can be even more dangerous with a large group because everybody else assumes that somebody else will maintain the eye contact. Badger, this way. Badger, this way. Oh, my God. It's the 911 effect. Oh, my God. It's uh, uh, when something happens, right? Hey, call 911, get emergency services, right? But, like... Everybody assumes the other person has called 911, so nobody actually calls 911. It's the same effect. It's it's weird herd mentality. <laughs> you all hold me. Oh, wait. Went the other way. Fire escape. Oh. Zooming. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my god. I got this. I got this. <laughs> Go frame of that scream. If you prefer fight to flight, bashing monsters to death with shovels or stop signs is an option in Lethal Company. This strategy is much more suited to a modded lobby with 10 guys running around than a default lobby with four. Get his ass, fellas. Oh, oh fuck. <laughs> nice. This game was clearly designed as a runaway from the monsters game, not a Space Hulk, the monsters run away from me game. He is cooked. Oh, I'm gonna gobble him. <laughs> <laughs> Tom and Jerry I'm death sight. scream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Tom and Jerry looking Dude. ass death. All right, I'm about to jump into the ocean. Here we go. I'll see y'all later. <laughs> Plenty of monsters are invincible. Most can out DPS you, and it always feels better to find the creative solution to the bad guy instead of trying to solve every problem with a stop sign. Will he take a whole ass large axle? I want to see him take anything. It. All right, all right, you ready? Yeah. Okay, back up, back up. Oh, he took, he <laughs> took a whole ass large axle. <laughs> He seemed pretty happy about it. And you've already seen in this video that the scariest monsters are often your own teammates. Yeah. It's also common to have a commander, so to speak, who is somebody that stays behind on the ship to monitor the radar, open secure doors, teleport players, and communicate on the radio. They're essentially the one driving the boat, having both... It's so funny that this game actually loves... Uh, it's relevant to have this. When in a game like Phasmophobia, 
it's not really i mean it depends on what you're doing right sometimes having if you're doing prison right or maybe like full sunny meadows right okay maybe it's relevant to have some person shot call from the truck but more often than not this just ends up with one or two people in the truck not (laughs) too scared to go in and then you and your buddy are just going in and you're like i don't know what you want from me like <laughs> like we, we haven't found it it's been five to ten minutes at this point we have not found this ghost that's already hunting what do you want from me please get out of the truck <laughs> but it's it's interesting to see just like how in a game like phasmophobia another social experience game that that's kind of vilified or that's kind of like you know like oh frowned upon or or even kind of just a a selling point people be like nah i don't want to play people are just gonna wait in the truck versus this where this could be really really helpful i guess it just depends on your play group certain play groups like in uh i almost (laughs) said faz again uh, in lethal company right i'm sure they would not like an overseer like this certain groups would likewise depending on what you're doing phasmophobia you can either like or dislike it you have that freedom of choice there's the funny words right there, the funny concept, freedom of choice. It's almost like the game just gives you a game and you play the game and you play it the way you want to play it. Whoa, dude, that's so weird. Great power and great responsibility. Let me drive the boat. His ass is boot. Do not give him the keys. 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 Let's go. Yeah. 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 Because if they ever decide to take off early, it means a premature death for anybody not on the ship. And I have never seen a group of interns so angry. For what reason? For what reason? You are such a stupid moron. Do you know how much loot we had? We had thousands. Did you? We're gonna beat you to death with hammers. I hope you know that. I say that we revoke Digi's oxygen privileges. I I think that those need to those need to go away. Yes. 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 Give me them ten. It's like I just watched a modern retelling of Lord of the Flies. It was that was actually great. I don't feel respected here. Why do I need reverb? Wait, where did you go? You can't leave the disrespectful space. Final question I'm sure you're asking is Lethal Company scary? And the answer entirely depends on settings. If you were in the big lobby mob like me and constantly have teammates around saying things like this, you only get salt, pepper, ketchup, a little bit of poop. Uh, you know, the usual. No, it's not scary. If you jack up your brightness like I see a ton of people do, no, it's not a scary game. But if you're playing default four-player regular vanilla, I think it shows how brilliant and scary, or at the very least unsettling, the game is. I never thought I'd unironically say this word, but the reason why is immersion. I know Skulker is about to bully me and tell me I smell like beans for saying that word, but hear me out. You're playing the KV2, you smell like fucking beans, dog. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Unlike a Discord call, which feels flat and 2D, the proximity voice chat in this game makes it feel 3D with both distance and direction. It, it, do you remember Halo 3 on the 360 had proximity chat? How many people remember that Halo 3 on the Xbox 360 had proximity voice chat? I, just, I want to, like... It just exas- uh, not exasperate. I-, I want to just focus on we had this solved in Halo 3. What is it with games that they just canned proximity voice chat? Like, and now we're now it's like as bad as saying, oh, this is proximity voice chat. It works in Phasmophobia, it works in this, it works in Halo 3. It just works. I mean, I'm sure there's probably games where proximity voice chat might not be the thing to do, but I'm going to be honest, I think proximity voice chat is incredibly relevant, and the games that do implement it, it's always a selling point in reviews and breakdowns and analyses like this. It's always a selling point. So it blows my mind when AAA games solved this in Halo 3 on the Xbox 360 back in 2007, and we still, to this day, have AAA, quadruple-A games that just refuse to put the feature in. It blows my mind. Oh, you're up there. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> For lack of a better word, you are immersed in this world with 3D surround sound that temporarily tricks you into feeling like you are in a place talking to other people. I oh, think I got my swagger back! <laughs> 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 the moment I realized this was brilliant was the moment it was taken away from me. I was deep in the facility down a labyrinth of hallways and my flashlight was almost dead. I feel like it's getting kind of late, fellas, and I'm running out of battery. I called out for help from my teammates, but I was met with silence, so I tried the radio instead. Let's try this. Can anybody help me get out of the facility? I'm just totally lost. Nobody. Silence. Hello? <laughs> I have never felt so completely alone in my entire life. You get so comfortable saying things out loud and hearing things said back in a 3D space that when you say something and don't hear anything back, it is haunting. Your flashlight is dead, the night is getting darker, and the only noises you can hear are monsters approaching you from all angles. Okay, I'm hearing big movement. Honestly, oh, at this point- big boy. He didn't see me. He did? <laughs> no, you didn't see me, you didn't see me! <laughs> Just leave the facility, Badger. What do you think I'm trying to do? I can't find my way out. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> that was such a labyrinth, there was no way that I was finding my way out. That God, is how that. Lethal Company can be scary and what makes it so brilliant. When you are a... And, and that's the thing. Like, it... it it normalizes the experience. It inf it uh, enforces that communication. It immerses you in it. And thus, you're at the bottom of this facility trying to get out. Your flashlight's dead, and suddenly you're alone. You feel like you're alone. It doesn't feel like, you know, oh, you can just hop in Discord or hop in TeamSpeak or something like that. And hey, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm Warden's office on prison. Anybody in the van, can you tell me what's going on? Is there a hunt going on? What's happening, right? Same thing Phasma, right? It's it sets it up so well. And I want AAA and quadruple A games to take notes from this. Call of Duty, I want you to understand what p things that you can put in your game. Am I saying Call of Duty to leave the company? No. What you can put in your game to make it better. Hey, what is what could be a selling point for Call of Duty 2025? Oh, wait a second. We could put proximity voice chat in. We could make lobbies back we could make it a social experience my god it's almost like people had those in past games and you would just be reintroducing them into the game to create a better experience for very little work and this is why i'm so happy that lethal company outsold it i'm so happy that lethal company just absolutely looked at a media giant like call of duty and absolutely just said sit down let me show you my quota. Let me show you my, my profits. <laughs> around others, the game really makes you feel like you're around others. I retweet a lot of shit, bro. Like, I don't keep up. I just, I just hit retweet and I keep scrolling. <laughs> when you are by yourself, the game really makes you feel like you are by yourself. We are talking 100% forever alone. You are a dead man walking that they will never find. <laughs> I am blown away that this game was made by one guy, and you yeah. won't understand the true extent of his goofy creativity until you've played it for yourself. Press B on things and just, I eat it and it disappears. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Don't eat Try. the toilet either, that's just gross. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm excited to see how Lethal Company evolves in the future, because since I started making this video, there's been a major update and a mountain of mods added to this game. The introduction of the double barrel shotgun from this nutcracker monster has completely changed the game. This one item suddenly makes every crewmate more dangerous than a police officer hearing a falling acorn. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Damn. Damn. I don't know why, but having this thing around crewmates is like a PDF around boomers. People are gonna die. I guarantee it. That's actually the key to just conquering boomers. Ask them to sign a PDF digitally. They just die. <laughs> I asked a boomer to sign a PDF for me and he pulled out an electron microscope. <laughs> Adding a gun to the game may not sound like the irony of this because I did work in finance and I had to send uh, people PDFs and, and signature stuff through email. Oh, God, sometimes it, it turned into an entire ordeal. Big shift, but it has the ability to transform sometimes they were 20 crewmates into homicidal maniacs. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, I'm seven.
<laughs> What's even funnier is that there's a new item called the dramatic mask that is specifically designed for this purpose of turning teammates evil. As in, if you hold it up to your face, you can literally turn into a monster that attacks your teammates like a zombie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> and even that thing is far less dangerous than a teammate with a shotgun in his hands. I got, I got five copies of your <laughs> ears. <laughs> <laughs> in the hands of a reasonable teammate, the outcomes are incredibly positive because the ability to kill a monster in a split second will get you out of a jam and save lives. But putting the power of God in the hands of an unreasonable teammate, the outcomes may not be so positive. You know what? Yeah. I don't even care. I eat bullets. I don't give a fuck. Let me have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just had to G check him <laughs> on that dog. I had to. The shotgun just talks to me sometimes. You can't blame it on me. Please, give me the shotgun. I'm normal. I can be trusted with a double barrel shotgun when my teammates are unarmed. <laughs> You're coming after me. I'm fucked. I have a gun. Little girls aren't good against guns. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Only I can see her, and when she reaches me, my head is full. Nice. <laughs> I just wanted to tell him that I would solve his problem so badly. There's even a safety mechanic on this thing, because when it's loaded with the safety off, it can randomly fire, and nice. not all of us agreed on safety rules. What happened down here? So my safety was on, and I didn't manage to shoot, but Ooh. thankfully, Mickey saved me. Hey, you can just hey, never turn the safety fun. on. That solves your problem. Safety always <laughs> off. What? I am a responsible If I make it back, oh, no, I do that. great. <laughs> Sigrid is locked the fuck in. She was not tolerating any tomfoolery, all right? Sigrid is so locked in. Dog. How is this possible? We are reaching levels of locked in we thought previously unattainable. I was Fucking locked in. Sigrid, you fucking <laughs> shot me in the back of the head. If you were any more locked in, it would be considered a prison sentence. What makes this especially dangerous is that the spread on this bad boy is massive, and it has no problem slapping multiple targets at once. Okay. Yo, come outside real quick. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, somebody How killed me. How do we me. all die from that? My most recent play session in February taught me that mods can definitely enhance or weaken the experience, depending on your perspective. Like, cosmetics and emotes are just fine. What is gorilla? Oh, yeah. that's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! What do you think? <laughs> but if you turn on the wrong mod, like Brutal Company, it ruins everything. Bruh, Bruh. Bruh. Yeah, Pasta doesn't know that there's gonna be a mine under his feet in three, two, <laughs> oh, no. one, and... <laughs> oh Yo, he got this single frame execution. It may be funny for a round or two, and it may make Twitch chat laugh, but that's only because you've made the game impossible. Yeah. Sometimes that's the fun part. <laughs> oh my god, Chad. That's probably the scariest thing. That has never happened to me in my life. Don't get me wrong, I'm strongly in favor of pushing the bounds of what's possible in a game and limit testing to the ends of the earth. We must limit test. But there comes a point where too much is too much. Like if you find yourself in a game where you can always hear other people talking no matter your position on the map, the big lobby mod has gone too far. Gary. Um, bitch, we can hear y'all through the bookcase. <laughs> yeah, we can. <laughs> as soon as I think Gary's too far away to be heard, I just hear, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of one lobby of 20, how about two games of 10? Four games of five? Five games of four? You do the math. I think I've made my point on the mods. If you really want to squeeze the fun out of this game, less is more. This is just Gary. I don't care what you tell me. Yeah. This is Gary. Uh -oh. Wrapping on up here, I can't thank those of you on Twitch enough for helping me make this video. From the subs to the bits to the jokes. So I forth. used my neural link to exterminate every Kia Solo in existence. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you hate the Kia Soul so much. That makes no sense. Damn, I don't want Chat to get a neural link. If Chat ever gets a hold of a neural link, it's over. Kia Souls are built like ink in the fire. I stream two hours a day, six days a week now, and having thousands of you screaming at me about my busted ass hairline really is a dream come true. 
Do not forget about the Swow merch at the link below. It's only available for the next 14 days, and it's a great way to support these videos while also making sure you pass the fit check. Fresh. And a final shout out to Zekers for reminding me what kind of power an individual has in 2024. The fact that Lethal Company was made by a single person blows my mind, and I've never spent a better $10 in my entire life. <laughs> oh my God. I two bullets and I had Hitler, Stalin, and Digi in front of me and shoot Digi twice. <laughs> if the earth is flat, why is my life constantly going downhill? Oh. 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 <laughs> no. That's a jetpack. What is, what is this hatch actually for? All right, there he goes. <laughs> what? The heck? <laughs> <laughs> Why did it do that? Why did it do that? <laughs> Why did it do that? I read the directions on the jetpack. It said, We fly high, no lie. And that's about it, dog. The final thing I have to say is thank you for watching all the way to the end of my video. I really hope it defied your expectations. Thank you for hearing me out on the merch, and I am so excited to see what the next video looks like. All you Twitch MFs already know it's Helldivers 2, but I am so excited to start that video. It's not even funny. Once again, thank you so much. You guys give me the greatest job in the whole wide world, and I will catch you in the next video. <laughs> I just wanted to make a weird noise just to like really mark the end of the video, and I, I guess that works. <laughs> More bango. Oh, I love his endings. They're so good. The uh, song is... There you go. X Paradise Alpha Scan. We'll see what happens. Might get cop grade. Who knows? <laughs> This was amazing. I do want to take a second to, uh, one, not that Badger will see this, but thank you, Badger. Thank you, everyone who worked on that video and everyone who corroborated on that video. This was a highlight of my week to look forward to. I'm very happy that uh, I got the chance to watch this, got the hands chance to see this, got the chance to analyze this, so to speak, as well. I wanted to uh, make sure I st uh, spent enough time on it, and I hope that uh, you know, 59 minutes, almost an hour full, is uh, more than transformative enough for some people. I do also want to say as well that uh, because of YouTube, because of certain demonetization things, because of really the certain climate of YouTube and seemingly prioritizing uh, burnout culture, um, Badger, take your time with your videos. They are absolutely just a treat to look forward to. I'm. It's been amazing to see you on Twitch. I've seen your notifications nearly nightly now, and it, it seems like you have such a good time. It seems like you have such a good time on stream, and you know you are just an absolute inspiration to a lot of people, to a dingus like me who often finds myself having to talk about a lot of interesting things and a lot of very serious topics. I wish I could be as funny and lighthearted as Badger, but alas, I am an internet dingus that gets to have a lot of very serious conversations. But um, thank you, Badger. Um, these videos do take time. I personally will not upload this until at minimum four days after the original video has gone live. Uh, if you have not checked out the original video, I would absolutely recommend that you go check out the Russian Badger. I would also recommend that you go out and check this original video, even if you just put it on in the background afterwards. If you put it on, um, you know, just a couple times throughout the day, I it takes a lot of time to make those videos. I'm not, you know, unaware of that fact. I also want to do my best to not be that person that just sees, oh, new Badger video, uploads it within two hours after. I, I have been outspoken. I do think that. Uh, you know, unless the creator is okay with that, I think that that's an, a very uh, slippery slope policy for YouTube and React content creators. As somebody that does do things, I do stream on Twitch. I do have a couple other channels that I upload VODs to, um, looking at doing other things with. But uh, React content is really the only thing that uh, <laughs> I seem to do well. So I, I want to make sure that I'm, uh, you know, talking about that. And Badger could be perfectly fine with that. I know some other creators are not. And for my own thing, I will not upload it until at minimum four days, four calendar days after the original has gone live. So I wanted to kind of clarify that really quick. If you haven't checked out Badger, go check him out. I, I like him. He's an awesome dude. He's an awesome creator. I'm very small. Uh, I, I still want to issue my thanks because he really is the difference that YouTube needs. He is one of those creators that just puts out amazing content. And unfortunately, YouTube, uh, you know, likes to uh, hit him with some demonetizations, likes to hit him with that that little little funny money hammer. Uh, hammer. And, uh, you know, I want to send what support I can over. I do know there's people that have discovered Russian Badger through me. And, you know, I hope there's more. I hope that you do check him out. He is, in my opinion, worth it. But alas, that is my thoughts on this. What are your thoughts on Lethal Company? What are your thoughts on Kip not playing Lethal Company? Because for all intents and purposes... <laughs> A VTuber and everything. Uh, well, not everything, but name. I, I don't really uh, get the chance to do collabs or anything. I'm not, uh, I'm kind of a satellite entity, if you will. I'm not your average VTuber at the very least. 
Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know if you liked this video. Let me know if you liked kind of this style of an analytic reaction. Um, I guess what was the high point of this video? Let me know in the comments section down below. And thank you all for watching. See you in the next one.